skill moving. Right? So it's just, it's a philosophical difference of how that move appears, emerges. So everything interacts. It's not just maturation, it's not just what I'm seeing or hearing, everything plays a role. So if you go back to our triangle, what's at the top of the triangle? Individual. What's one at the bottom? Task. What's the other one? Environment. Right? They all interact and we see a particular behavior emerge. And what dynamical systems says is that behavior doesn't have to necessarily be controlled centrally. It could be controlled at the local level. Make sense? instance we're looking at systems within the person. So we're looking at the cardiovascular system, we're looking at um, the nervous system, we're looking at the skeletal system. All right. So the constraints are under the individual. Some systems develop more slowly. So I can't walk the first week I'm born. Humans can't walk the first week they're born. Giraffes, antelope, zebra, elephant, walk within several hours, horses, walk within several hours of being born. They walk on their own without help. Where? It takes us forever to, look, to do that, right? A whole year before we walk gives us some advantages, right? But systems develop at different times. So the system that develops the most slowly is controlling the kinds of behaviors you see. So we call it a rate limiter or a, a rate controller. The rate that I develop a particular skill depends upon the slowest developing system that impacts that skill. Okay. So in young children, often strength is the rate limiter for a particular skill. If I want to hop, then I have to be strong enough to lift my body weight against gravity off the floor. Right? So strength is a rate limiter for young children for hopping. We see rate limiters of different types across the lifespan, but then they really become obvious again when we go to the other end of the lifespan and we look at elderly people, right? because now the rate limiter becomes the system that is deteriorating the quickest and therefore is affecting movement patterns and making them less effective. Right? So initially which system is developing the slowest? At the other end of the spectrum we're looking at which system is breaking down the fastest. Right? So it could be joint health. Right? I might have arthritis in my shoulder, 
So now the arthritis becomes a rate limiter because I can't get the can of baked beans off the top shelf. I have to get a stool to get up to get to the can of baked beans. Okay. So rate limiters, rate controllers play quite a big role. And you can visualize that using this graphing idea. Here is a system that's already mature. So system one doesn't change the overall behavior that we see. Its influence is the same the whole time. Okay. Whatever system two is, didn't change, suddenly changed, so this sudden change in behavior here, system two played a role in. System three, system four. If I put all those systems together, the behavior that I see changes across time. Yes? Ish? So, perception and action, I just want to talk about affordances, okay? Because I think, I'm not, I told you last week, I'm not teacher trained. I'm not a PE teacher. I did coach full time for a long, long time. Um, but that's not the same because the training is different. But I think this idea of affordance is a very useful tool as a teacher or a coach. I wish I had known it when I was coaching full time. Right? Because the term affordance represents what the environment, what an object, what something around you offers you to do. Right? What are you afforded the opportunity to do? So what function, what movement can I do given this set of circumstances? Right? And I think that's interesting because we're going to talk more in chapter 11 about perception and action. You can't just look at perception and you can't just look at actions. The two drive each other. So my perception of something drives what I do. Okay. It means that what I perceive might not be the same as what you perceive. So for example, okay, I fly home from London, get to Dallas, it's a 10 hour flight, been sitting cranked up in that plane for 10 hours, and you get off the plane, and where they disembark you, there's a huge long flight of stairs to get up into the walkway to change terms. Okay? So you have three options when you get there, there's a lift, Oh, um, help me out here. Elevator. Elevator. Thank you. <laughs> escalator, moving staircase, or a set of stairs. Okay. Everybody gets off the plane, everybody has the same three choices. My choice, because of the affordance given me, is to walk up the stairs carrying my bag because I've been sitting on my butt for 10 hours and my legs are killing me on my back. And now I can move. I'm like the only person on the plane. 250, 300 people disembark off the plane, and I am the only person that that set of choices affords the opportunity to walk up the set. Right? My perception of that environment was it afforded me the opportunity to get kind of the kinks out and the blood flowing again. Other people's perception is, I've been sitting on a plane for 10 hours, I'm knackered, I've got no sleep, I'm going to stand on 
on the escalator. Right? Exact same environment, different opportunity to move based upon the individual. Does that make sense? <coughs> to me, I think this, this seems like this is really crucial for teaching because what we often do when we're teaching is we spend ages and ages on these lesson plans, right? If you haven't started yet, you will, especially those of you who are a PE teacher, you will spend a lot of time writing lesson plans. So you have to think ahead, what is it I'm going to do? What equipment am I going to use? How am I going to set it up? What's the goal? Right? And you have all these ideas and you're really excited and you set it all up in the gym before the kids come in and the kids come in and they don't do what you thought they were going to do. And you're like, whoa, 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 wait, 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 you're doing that all wrong. What I wanted to see was, well, are they really doing it wrong? Or did the setup afford them a different opportunity to move? Right? Because the affordance is perceptual, it's internal, it's individual. You, I can't tell you what you think you have the opportunity to do in a particular environment. I mean, I can tell you what I would like you to try and do, but that doesn't mean you think that that's what you should do. Do you get that idea? Right? So I think that this is a, this is quite a key point because we often tell people we're working with they do something wrong when in fact they did exactly what we gave them the opportunity to do it just wasn't what we were expecting and i think if we go back to last week right it's really important that we try not to say you're wrong you're bad that's not what i want as much as possible because we want people to have fun. We want people to succeed. Otherwise, they don't practice. And therefore, they won't get good at moving and they won't be healthy. Right? It's circular. So, if I'm aware of this idea, it's another opportunity where I can catch myself about to go, that's not what I wanted you. Okay, can I think of a different way of saying that that doesn't sound negative? Oh my gosh, that's not what I was expecting. Ha, huh, good idea. How about let's try this one and introduce your version of what you want to learn. Okay. I think, like I said, I'm not a PE teacher. And in coaching, we're sometimes not very subtle and we should be a lot better at being a teacher. So maybe this is an idea we can use to be more appropriate when we're trying to teach someone something new. Right? Body scaling. So if I've got eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds, and we want to teach them to play basketball, and we take them down in the gym, Who's a basketball person? Who's basketball? Anyone basketball? No basketball? Really? We don't have any basketball players. <laughs> How high is the basketball net? Tenth. The rim or the net? Oh lord. <laughs> the rim is The rim, I suppose. The rim is ten, ten feet. Ten feet. Alright. So I've got some eight-year-olds and I want them to throw a basketball into the net. How many are they going to get in the net at 10 feet? At eight, there's always that. What ball are you using? You can touch the net. Ah. Remember, what we want is success. Lower the net. That's called body scaling. Right? I'm going to scale the equipment to the individual 
so that the individual can be successful at the skill. It's also a very good example of manipulating our task constraint. Right? The two go hand in hand. If I body scale it, then more likely to be successful. Yes? If they're successful, they come back and try again. So, body scaling also plays a role in this affordance idea. And it's not necessarily a conscious role. It could just be your brain looking at something going, okay, that's not going to happen. All right. So right now, there's a very good um, example of body scaling. Let's see if I can find this. You may have seen this. Involve 
a nervous signal running from a receptor all the way up to the brain, a decision being made and a signal coming all the way back down. So we've got other ways of organizing the movement. And so now we see slightly different research questions being asked and we're getting different kinds of information coming through. As I said last Thursday, I really like it because constraints theory at least, dynamical systems can get very complicated, but constraints theory <coughs> is really simple and it gives me a very nice tool for trying to understand what I'm seeing happening right in front of me. How do I explain? If I can't explain, remember, if I'm trying to teach, Right? If you're trying to teach me to catch a ball and you didn't know I was a gymnast and you didn't know that I hadn't had any practice at catching, how are you going to explain that you're faced with a 50-year-old woman who misses the ball when you throw the ball at her? Right? What's going to happen in your head? How are you going to explain that? And if you can't explain it, how are you going to teach me how to catch the ball? If you don't know why I'm not catching the ball. That makes sense. I mean, I've got two hands, I've got two eyes, I've got two feet, I can move pretty well, and yet I can't catch the ball. How are you going to teach me? Yeah. Performance cues. Performance cues. What if the performance cues don't make any difference? Can I? <laughs> I'm unteachable. <laughs> you would not be the first person to say that, my friend. That has been mentioned in the past. So, all right. If you want to, if you want to teach it, understanding what you're seeing helps you come up with appropriate teaching cues. Okay. So, <clears throat> question. Right? 
So you'll have to create yourself a password for Human Kinetics. Once you are in Human Kinetics, you can go to the textbook, enter your key code, and it will open up the information for the specific textbook. Does that make sense? Okay, we have 10 minutes. Go, get on.